Today on Talking Solutions, we want to welcome back a couple of our favorites from the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame, Executive Director Dan Dolby in-house, and also Steve Stallworth, General Manager of the South Point Arena. Yes, ma'am. Dan, I have lots of questions for you about the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame, but real quick, Steve, your name first came out into the Las Vegas market, I believe, through UNLV football. Well, years ago, I was the famous trivia question, Terry, who followed Randall Cunningham at quarterback at UNLV? So I got to UNLV in 1982. I played football from 82 to 86. I met a Las Vegas girl and I've been here ever since. It's been a great ride. Well, you know, that's what happens. I came to Las Vegas with my now husband in 92. You get here and if you pay attention and you look below the surface, below the tourism, you see this amazing group of individuals. And so you're hooked. And we are so pleased, Steve, to have your daughter Savannah also working with us here at Beasley Media Group. It's amazing. I worked for Tom Hum back in 19... No, geez, 89, somewhere around there, 1990. And now my daughter, 25 years later, is working for Tom now. So it really is kind of a trip. But it's fun to watch her go through a lot of the same things that I went through here. And you were talking about trivia questions. You mentioned Tom Hum, who was our media manager for Beasley Media Group. And I know his brother David is a trivia question in relation to the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame. That's right. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary of the Hall of Fame. 20 years ago, a guy named Rich Abajan, rest in peace, Rich. Uh, we lost him this was, past year. We did lose him a few months ago. And Rich, at the time, was the general manager of Saturn of West Sahara, worked for Cliff Finley. And Rich had this vision. We literally, Terry, believe it or not, were the only state in America that did not have a sports hall of fame. So it was kind of a twofold thing 20 years ago. Number one, we wanted to find a way to recognize David Hum, Tom's brother, and just all the things that David did in our community. And for some of your new listeners, David Hum grew up in Las Vegas. He played football at Bishop Gorman High School. At the time, and maybe even still today, some people claim that he was the highest recruited football player out of Southern Nevada ever, even to this date. David went on and continued his career at the University of Nebraska, three bowl rings there. He played for Bob Devaney. He played for Tom Osborne there. Then he went on and became a quarterback in the NFL, played for 10 years, eight of those years with the Raiders, the Los Angeles and the Oakland Raiders, played a year for the Buffalo Bills and the Baltimore Colts, and just really a distinguished sports career. He went on after that and became a successful business man here in Las Vegas came down with a very debilitating disease, MS. And, you know, we were all sort of looking for a way to honor him. And Rich's idea was sort of to combine both of these ideas and to create a Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame with David Hum being our inaugural inductee. And it was just one of the most magical nights that anybody could ever imagine, the fact that we were able to honor him. All of the support and all of his friends that came out, for all you old Raiders fans, I mean, Jim Plunkett was there, Jack Tatum, Otis Sistrunk, you just name it, Lester Hayes, up and down the roster. They were all there to support David. Al Davis came in and presented David. Tom Osborne was there. His old high school coach, Frank Nails. It really, really was a magical night. And, you know, that was the night that we knew we sort of had something. Not only was it a beautiful night for David, but we knew that this was the birth of the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame. And, you know, now fast forward 20 years, which is amazing. You know, it seems like just yesterday we honored David. Dan has been on our board now for 15 of those years, probably, and now our executive director and has just taken it to levels we never, ever imagined. So proud of the progress and the growth of our board. I was just telling Dan this morning at our board meeting last night, I was just shaking my head looking around that room of all of the guys and girls on our board that have made a commitment over these last 20 years and all the money we've donated back to kids, really to further sports. Our mission is to enhance the opportunities for youth in Southern Nevada through sports and help build character through that. So we've got some great programs, and Dan is spearheading all of them. It's really been great. Dan, how did they find you? Steve Stallworth had mentioned just now you were on the board for the Southern Nevada Sports. Hall of Fame. What happened was Billy Purcell, who still works for Steve to this day, was working with me at Pepsi Cola when I first got to town in 1998. And Billy said, I got to get you introduced to these guys and get into the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame and you can get to know people. And it was really kind of a networking piece for me when I first got here and was able to meet some great people, Steve included, Don Logan, Simon Keith, all the mainstays of the sports world here in Las Vegas. And then over the years, it's just kind of grown to something that we all envisioned it would be, but really didn't know how to get it done until we kind of changed our directions a few years ago and decided to make this a big deal and make a commitment to not only the board and the Hall of Famers, but to the community. So it's been a fun ride. 
And you are a 501c3 charity, I would imagine? We are a 501c3, and all of the money that we raise that Steve alluded to goes back into a couple different initiatives that we have. The first one being we give away scholarships to Clark County School District seniors that we've identified through the Public Education Foundation. These scholarships, there was about 200 applicants last year. It's whittled down to what they call 80 qualified, and then we pick four. And these kids are athletes. They're scholars. They're high character kids that I try to assist going on to the next level. They're not the kids that are receiving the athletic scholarships. Because they're already covered. Well, not necessarily. You'd be surprised because the schools that these kids are going to this year, there's two of them going to Cornell in New York. So you're looking at about sixty to $70,000 a year. Ouch. So these kids, they're getting some help because they're 4.8 grade point averages, but they all still have desire to play sports. So all four of our athletes this year, our scholars, are going to be walking on. So they're not the kids that received that scholarship for being an outstanding athlete. We awarded it because they're outstanding people. We kind of have those grinders, those kids that just work hard. They're not the superstars, but they're the kids that I know personally I really identify with because they're the ones that really had to work hard to get where they're at. And so it's just been awesome to be able to award these kids these scholarships. The second initiative, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Clark County School District has eliminated all but, I believe, one sport in junior high. Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Activity and movement is so important for everybody's health ongoing. And yeah. And we it, take that away? That's what's amazing is there's only basketball that's available in the Clark County School District's junior highs. I know back when I was in junior high, you had an opportunity to play six or seven different sports. So we saw an opportunity that we could really assist those kids. So with the 55 different junior highs in town, we give scholarships to go to sports camps to those kids. So each school gets about eight to 12 scholarships that they can give away through their athletic programs. And then we have baseball, we have basketball, football, volleyball, soccer for all the different kids in town. We hope to get about six to 700 kids through these camps. You guys have to raise a lot of money in order to make that happen. We do. The event is a big deal for us, which is coming up on June 24th. But one of the things that we've really tried to accomplish is not to be a one-trick pony. We're not just an event anymore. It used to be back when this thing started, I got involved and Steve started this thing 20 years ago. We'd have an event about three months before the event. We'd get together and start meeting, drink a couple beers, and have some lively debate, and then have an event. We shook hands, and we kind of moved on, and we said, we'll see you in eight months. But with the growth of the organization, the growth of the event, we saw an opportunity to really take this to the next level. So what we've tried to do is become a year-round operation. Hence, that's where my position came into play. I actually work for the YMCA's of Southern Nevada, and the YMCA's have gone into a management agreement with the Hall of Fame. So part of my responsibilities as the vice president of sales at the YMCA's is I run the Hall of Fame. It's been a great fit for us. The YMCA has brought some things that we didn't have before, office space, pens, papers, the things that we took for granted when we were just putting on an event. So what we've tried to do is become more of a community partner. So we're getting involved with other organizations. We're putting on second and third events. We're looking to do some things in the community so that that money that you talked about really becomes a substantial amount that we can invest back in the kids. Sure. Well, if you're not spending money on office space and all of the supplies, that gives you a little bit more to put into those scholarship programs for the middle schools. Yeah. And we're all business people and we work in the community. And then all of a sudden we form this other organization. And it's kind of like I was looking at the walls saying, okay, what now? So we really had to put a strategic plan together on what we want to accomplish. And we did that with our executive board and we put a a very good three and five year strat plan together. And I'm proud to say that two years into it, we're hitting all our benchmarks. And we really think that the sky's the limit with the organization. Pretty exciting. We're talking about the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame now coming into the 20th year. It has gone fast. And in studio today with us on Talking Solutions, we've got Executive Director Dan Dolby, also Steve Stallworth, who is the General Manager of the South Point Arena, and a well-known sports figure in this town on your own. This is really great. After 20 years with the four inductees or sets of inductees in this case for this year's big ceremony, which is on Friday the 24th at the Orleans Arena. We're going to have a total of 93 in the Hall of Fame. Is that right? 
We have 94 right now. And then this class of four will take us up to, you know, the 98 mark. Well, and when I talk about it being even more than one, because the inductees, I was looking at this, we've got the first MMA fighter who's going into the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame, Frank Muir. Frank Muir, local boy. Yes, another local boy who was a former major league outfielder, Marty Cordova. Correct. He was with the Twins, right? Was with the Twins, yeah. The whole 1998 UNLV golf team. Boy, we have some great golf players coming out of UNLV. So we've got them and also Sig Rogic. And Sig Rogic in this town has been around for so long and has a lot of old political successes and such. But he had to have some sports input if he's going into the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame. If you remember, Terry, a lot of people have credited Sig with being, if not the person, the the ringleader for bringing Jerry Tarkanian to Las Vegas way back in the day. Sig also served on the Nevada Athletic Commission for years and years. And it's just been widely noted for his involvement in boxing in particular. But Sig has been very supportive. He's been the president of the Public Education Foundation, geez, for as long as I can remember, and just all the things he's done for sports and youth. He's a very worthy person. You know, it's funny, Terry, you talk about 94, 98 members now. I remember 20 years ago, we thought, well, we might have enough people in Las Vegas to maybe make this thing last for seven or eight years. But we had no idea of all of these young people that would be coming up that we didn't even know who they were. Frank Mir is a great example. 20 years ago, Frank Mirror was probably five years old. Who knew that there was going to be a young guy from Las Vegas that was going to be so successful in the infancy of mixed martial arts with the UFC? You know, we've inducted a lot of younger people lately. Who knew about Tasha Swikert, the Olympic gymnast? She wasn't even born when our Hall of Fame was formed, <laughs> you know? And Steven Jackson and some of these great athletes that have come out of here. So, you know, that fear went away because we know right now today there's a 10-year-old out there, there's a 12-year-old out there that's going to one of our camps who is going to be wildly successful who has done all the right things and worked his tail off and become very successful right here from Southern Nevada, who will be in our Hall of Fame 15, 20 years from now. There's a wave of them out there right oh, now. If it's you look huh. at Major League Baseball oh, man, with, that's with the Bryce best. and Chris Bryant, and, uh-huh. and yeah, then absolutely. you look at DeMarco Murray in the NFL. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there right on the cusp of being Hall of Famers yep. here in Las Vegas and being these local kids. But they're all young, right? Like yeah. Steve said, they're five and six years old when this thing started. They're babies to me. I yeah. love them all. But you almost take on an ownership and your own parroting from a distance because you've watched Bryce Harper as he came through and he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated years ago as being the chosen one. And now we know that in his baseball career with Washington, Washington, he's going to end up probably being the highest paid player ever in the history of Major League Baseball. The latest thing I heard, something like the Yankees are going to look at him and they are the ones with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And when he comes up for free agency, he's going to be worth so much. Yeah, absolutely. And And certainly Bryce, if he continues what he's doing. And again, right, Terry, it takes a village. I'm friends with Bryce's father. And Ron will tell you that his upbringing in Vegas and the coaches, the youth coaches that he had and all the different camps that he went to and all the kids that he competed against, I mean, that all plays a role in someone being successful like that. So we're excited about the prospects for the future. Absolutely. You know, the Hall of Fame is something that will live on forever. And we're excited about that. And excited, too, as Dan said, about all the things that we're able to give back to the community. And it's not a health-related cause, per se. But for us, it is. I mean, it's important in our lives. And we have a tagline, where would you be without sports? You ask anybody on our board, anybody that lives in our world, we wouldn't be anywhere without sports. So we're excited about this event, particularly, and, of course, the future of the Hall of Fame, for sure. The Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame actually is headquartered out of Findlay Toyota in the Valley Auto Mall in Henderson. So if people were curious to see all of the inductees and to see the Sports Hall of Fame, would they just go over and visit during normal business hours for Findlay? Yeah, absolutely they would. It is on the second level of Findlay Toyota. Just walk in. You know, Findlay Toyota over the years has become such a great meeting place. If you walk into Findlay Toyota any day of the week, you're going to see a sports celebrity, a sports (laughs) figure, a coach, rich and and Cliff Finley have created a culture over there where that's kind of where we all just go hang out and go see friends and meet up and what have you. And, you know, what better place than to have our Hall of Fame there? Certainly there's a vision at some point where we would have our own building or our own structure. But I always try to tell people the Hall of Fame is about being part of something. It's not about a place or a location. But it's a great place to take your kids. It's a great place to take friends and just to see all the different people. Because I think people would be amazed at all of the athletes and their ties to Southern Nevada, particularly if you 
just moved to town the last 10 years, you'd be shocked at all of the different people there. I want to go back, too, to what Dan, if you don't mind, Terry, me saying, mm-hmm. too, I want to thank the YMCA here in town, Mike Luby, the President. CEO of the YMCA, for seeing the vision that we all had, too. And our Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame now is basically a branch of the YMCA, just like one of their locations would be. That has just been a godsend for us, and we just know that that partnership is a win-win, and it's all about just helping kids, helping our youth stay active. I don't know if you read the paper today, but another report came out that we now have 33% of Americans obese yeah. in America. We all knew the number was there, and of course, more studies and everything else, but it's important to keep our kids active, keep them moving, keep them going, for sure. I'll throw one out there that just recently came out through the YMCA is our kids' life expectancy is shorter than our own. That's so wrong. That's Absolutely not insane. what I want from my kids. No. You want something better for your kids, right? What better gift to give them the more life by being active and the things that we're trying to initiate? Yeah. It's so important. It's the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame. It really would help to inspire kids. And I was talking to Tom Hum, who was mentioned earlier, as we were going out the front door the other evening. And I said, I was just thinking of all the people who would be interested in finding out more about the Sports Hall of Fame. And that would be any parent of any child, any child who has any interest in any sport, because it's so diverse. The people who were inducted already into the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame. Anybody who lives here in Las Vegas, I didn't get here till 92. A lot of us weren't here when they were recruiting Jerry Tarkanian, but we certainly were knowing this NCAA championship basketball team that was amazing, that won it all. And I love the fact that we've got so much to offer. And we mentioned Bryce Harper on the horizon one of these days. Also, Chris Bryant with the Cubs. What a great kid. Wasn't he the rookie of the year last year? Mm-hmm. for Major League Baseball. His jerseys outsold everybody's from what I heard. And he was back here in town over at Cashman Field right before the start of the season. The Cubs were here in town playing. They were interviewing Chris. He loves Las Vegas. This is his hometown. This will always be his home. And he was also celebrating getting engaged to his best friend, also from Las Vegas, of course. There you go, Terry. Absolutely love it. One of the liveliest debates we have every year is who should be in the Hall of Fame. We have a committee headed up by Don Logan, who you know, Terry, who's the president of Las Vegas 51s. And we have a great group that are on that committee. They bring those recommendations to our board and let the debates begin. But anybody out there that wants to nominate somebody for the Hall of Fame certainly can. They just can go to our website. SNSHF.com. You can just Google Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame and we'll come up. We want to make sure that we recognize some of those people, particularly from years and years and years ago that we don't know who they are. And we're fortunate that on our board, we have all ages and all decades represented. But at the same time, there may be some people out there that we want to make sure we recognize. So go onto the website. There's a nomination form on there. You can certainly nominate, send in, find out any information you'd like on it. Like Steve said, we have the committee. And believe it or not, we still have a hundred different names or organizations or teams that are on the list. So every year it does become a lively debate. And it's actually pretty cool to hear the stories because I've been here 20 years now almost. I just don't know the history pre-2000, basically. To see some of those names, to hear the stories. But like Steve said, there's a whole bunch more out there. So the more that we can get the input, and I get calls every so often from people, and some of them are really good and some of them are a little kooky, you know. (laughs) But I always ask them, what makes you think that they deserve to be in the hall when you look at the list of the people that we have now. So kind of stack yourself up against some of the names we have in there, but there are a whole bunch more out there we want to identify. I will make sure that we have the links to the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame website on our Talking Solutions Facebook page. Also with podcast of our conversation today, we've got the induction ceremony for the 2016 class of the Southern Nevada Hall of Fame. That's going to be held on Friday, the 24th of June, coming up very soon at the Orleans Arena. You also have a golf tournament. I know, Dan, that's coming up right before, and that will, I'm sure, also raise funds for all of the work you do with the schools and sports. Absolutely. And that was part of the growth of our organization. Up until this year, we had the golf tournament and the induction ceremony on the same day. Whoa. So if you can picture a couple hundred people out on the golf course in 100 degree heat, having fun, socializing, having a few drinks. Oh, that's what golf <laughs> is. And then, uh, <laughs> then having to go home and get ready to go out to a nice event at the arena. It became too much and it's just a long day. So now that we're getting seven to 800 people at the event, we decided to make this two events kind of folded into one. 
one. So we moved the golf tournament to the day before on Thursday, the 23rd. We have some excellent partners with Red Rock Country Club and the Siena Golf Course that are really helping us out. They actually donate the course to That's us. It's a great course. Yeah. And so we decided to move it to the Thursday, let everybody have a great time. Make it more of a social event because that's what this event is all about. Not only identifying and honoring the people, but it's also bringing a whole bunch of people together that look forward to this event. Now they've got an excuse to do it on two days. So you can go out in the afternoon on Thursday, play golf, enjoy all Friday, whether they're at work or just taking the day off and then go to the event on Friday night. That illustrates the growth 20 years into it of the yeah. Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame, as yeah. it should be. Yeah. That's and, the way to do it. Yeah. And again, our vision is 20 years from now, and hopefully Steve and I are still walking around someplace. I'm hoping that we're not still having to do as much work as we're doing these days. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'll get some help by maybe you. We'll you get never some know. Help. That's part of the plan. The idea is to have this be a multi-event foundation and really be one of the key drivers in the community with youth sports and making this just a big deal. And Terry, I'll tell you, in our goal, golf tournament's pretty much sold out. We might have a few spots here and there. There are some tables still left at the dinner. We'll have five, 600 people at the dinner. But what I would share with anybody that has any interest out there, this is not your typical rubber chicken dinner. I mean, I go to these things all the time and this is high energy. Dick Calvert, the voice of the Rebels, is our MC. Ooh. I mean, you'll feel like you're at a Rebel football or basketball game. I mean, it's high energy. Dan does a great job with our videos, seeing highlights of the athletes up there and all those kind of things. And the silent auction is all sports related for the most most part, all of our former Hall of Famers come back to it. It's just a great event. Steve Carp, a few years ago, who is one of the senior members of our local Las Vegas sports media, said this is the must-attend event for sports in Las Vegas. So if you want to be involved in the sports business in Las Vegas, if you want to meet those folks or just come socialize and see some old friends, this is the place to be once a year for sure. Go onto the website and buy a couple tickets. You don't have to buy a whole table. Buy a couple tickets. Come down and uh, check us out. For a great cause. Plus, you said a lot of your former inductees for the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame are there. That's right. You want to see some people that you've watched over the years that you've rooted for as you watch their careers develop. This is the place to be. Last year, there was a line of pretty notable people in town that were waiting to meet and shake hands with Mike Tyson. <laughs> so yeah. you can see some pretty interesting characters and some people and some real influential people at this event. And yeah. you still and, have time to go. And every sports organization in Las Vegas is represented. You know, the UFC is a big sponsor of ours. The Las Vegas 51s, UNLV. Las Vegas Motor uh, Speedway. The Motor Speedway has been a longtime supporter and just been with us since day one. You know, you name it, any sports organization, the Pro Bowl Bull Riders event this year just bought a table and a foursome. So the PBR has even recognized that this is an organization they want to be involved in. Of course, casinos up and down the strip and arenas. So it really has grown and blossomed and we're proud of that diversity now that we've reached out into so many different areas. There are certain things that locals need to know and should participate in. And one of the things, 20 years into it now, you really need to check out the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame. As a local, you need to know what's going on here because this is an amazing place and you can check it out in Anytime during business hours wouldn't cost you anything. It's right there on the second floor of Finley Toyota in the Valley Auto Mall in Henderson. And as far as the awards ceremony, might still be able to get some tickets and see all these amazing people up close and personal for a great evening of entertainment. That is Friday, June 24th at the Orleans Arena. All the information, links, and everything will be on our Talking Solutions Facebook page and a podcast of our discussion today. What else do I need to add, guys? Terry, you've done a great job. We appreciate it yeah, very, we, very much. We love coming in here yeah. every year and being able to spread the word and Beasley's been a great partner of the Y and obviously the Hum family is very dear to us. The thing that I think we can kind of leave you with is this started as a recognition on a pretty small scale that blew up. It's been great to be a part of it. And Steve kind of hit on it. The Hall of Fame, although we don't have that building, we're not there yet. The Hall of Fame is the people in the organization. It's the Hall of Famers. It's the people who are on our board. But now it's the community and the kids. So a lot of people give us a little bit of hard time sometimes. Where's your hall? Do you need the walls? You need the brick and mortar? No, we don't. What we need is the people, and we're going to get more people involved in this thing. We need more people like you to help spread the word, so we appreciate what you do for us. But that's on us. That's part of the mission that we're trying to accomplish right now. But the awareness is great. We're looking forward to another 20 years, and we can't wait to see what that looks like. The brick and mortar will come one of these days, but I believe your hearts and your emphasis is in the right place, and that is through the 501c3 charity that is the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame, you're raising money to help kids 
kids with sports and being active and therefore being healthy, which is a big thing for me. I'm always beating that drum. So I think your hearts are in the right place and you're in the right direction. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Terry. We appreciate you. From the Southern Nevada Sports Hall of Fame, Executive Director Dan Dobin, also Steve Stallworth, General Manager of the South Point Arena. Thanks for coming in, guys, every year. I want it to be right here. All right. Love it.